So hypothermia and frostbite. Danger action team! Danger action team! Jumping our arms in cold water for reasons that are under two normal people. Very well aware we are a tropical animal. We don't have a lot of hair. We're not exactly adapted to <laughs> naturally be able to handle the cold. And his vasoconstriction is going to cause an increase in his blood pressure because it's, it's um, decreasing the size of the container. So, oh, well, if you have his fingers here, and you look, and it could be just because your skin is really red too, but you see how a lot much longer it takes for this hand? I can't really, I don't know if you can see it, but it takes much longer for this one to, to fill, fill up. up. Oh, yeah. Because this hand went, oh my god, and all of the blood, like, sucked out. Most people sit at 98.6. That is our baseline core temperature. Functional extremes, you can function as low as 97, which doesn't, it really isn't all that far down, or as high as 104. Anything outside of that range, you start to lose capacity, mental capacity, physical, uh, motor skills start to degrade, like things really start going down. Are there pennies or something for me to grab? There's some change in there, actually. There's a quarter in there. In 20 more seconds, there's two pennies, yep. There's a quarter, too. I don't want to keep moving it. Ah, nice. Okay, now go get your blood pressure. Oh. Change your action. Ah. Ah. At 96, we're going to have to go to the You start to shiver uncontrollably. And I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that when you, you know, you have a little bit of a shiver, like, ooh, but there is a point where you start shivering so badly you just can't stop. 94 degrees. You're shivering. Oh. Increases even oh. more. Like Coordination fails. The mumbles, the umbles, the stumbles, the grumbles, yeah. the fumbles. Yeah. Once they start tripping over themselves, they're not talking. They're, they literally they look like they're drunk. Yeah. Mm. They literally look like they're drunk. Like if you can picture that, that starts to happen. Uh. Uh. Oh no. Jason has fallen and it looks like he is hurt. We had better lift him out of here quickly, or he will be injured forever. Yes, so he's losing heat fast, so we need to get him into a hypo wrap. So we conveniently have tarps and rope, and we need that sleeping bag. Will, you want to grab the sleeping bag and the blanket? So we need to get 92 degrees. Now we're really getting into dangerous territory. So at 92... Shivering stops, right? Sh well, no, not quite. You're getting close. So you're still shivering, but it kind of becomes so intense you can't walk. So it becomes debilitating. The shivering is so intense you you literally can you just lay there and shake because you can't do anything. In here, in here. Oh, I've got hips, I've got pants or something. All right, on the count of three, we're gonna move him over there. We, we have to do it multiple times, we can do it multiple times. Everybody ready? Yep. ready? Anybody not ready? Nope. Good. One, two, three. Good. Now, get the snow out, because that will melt and make him wet. At 90, it becomes convulsive. You're shaking so hard that you're, you're literally practically convulsing. You're, it's you're like you go into a fetal position. It's like, it's your body's last attempt at like, okay, I gotta get all of this and try to conserve it as best I can. Still breathing, buddy? Still breathing, okay. So we're gonna leave this lightly in such a way where we can still see him, still assess him. He can still breathe, okay? But it's protecting his face from the elements. Ideally, if we had time while we're building a shelter, we would hang something over his head and leave somebody here to keep an eye on him. Continue to check all of his pulses and his Somewhere in between here and here, shivering stops. Um, you become unconscious. Are you actually warm in there? Yeah, I feel good. People appear ashen and gray because all of their blood has been shunted to as close to the core as they can get. 
They may appear dead, or they may already be dead. Pulse pulseless, apneic, like the breathing will drop down to like incredible rates of like four. Your heart rate will drop down to like 20. Which is why we have a saying, you're not dead until you're warm and dead. Because someone can potentially be brought back from that. But like brain damage space though? Yeah, I mean that's that's a risk. I mean, but there are people that have been under the ice for long periods of time that have come back with no deficit whatsoever. Uh, your, uh, how, any cold spots that you can feel? Uh, feels like he's grabbing my feet. Dress at your feet? Yeah, his feet are not well protected at all. All right, I'm gonna go down there and fix that head. for you. Right. So treatment, we did hypo wrap yesterday. If you're going to rewarm someone who has gone down into a hypothermic state, you need to be really careful. Uh, you don't want to shock their system. You want to do active rewarming, but be very careful with it. Um, especially if they happen to have signs of frostbite. Because if you rewarm them too quickly, you can actually cause damage to the tissues. I don't know what kind of sick joke this is. So we're just going to pick up the whole wrap as best we can. Together. Oh God, what's wait, happening? Wait, wait. What's happening? It's on the count. Ready? ready? Somebody talk to Anybody the patient. Anybody not he ready? Know what's happening. Yep. We're gonna lift you. Hey, we're putting you on a thing. We're gonna well, carry you out on that thing. We're moving you over to the litter now. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. On the count of jump. One, two, jump. Now with rewarming, one of the best things you can do: warm, warm liquids, but not hot. You know, like like nice warm hot chocolate, um, you know, like a warm tea, things like that to just get their core up and running. And then just pack their armpits, all of their like armpits, groin area, around their neck. Those are the areas you want to put like warm packs. So take like a like your uh, nagaline bottle and fill it full of warm water and like stick one in each armpit. Those are really highly vascular areas, and that will enable them to circulate warm blood through their body um, quickly. One last person we have available. So you're going to squat down and grab, grab your logs. And when you lift, obviously lift with your legs, not with your back, and just kind of stand straight up. Power through your legs like you're pushing off the ground, and that will make it more. Warm jello, yeah, That's, the sugar. The sugar is amazing. Yeah. Well, because well, carbohydrates, it helps. It helps with that. That's what like hot chocolate. That's another really a really good one, and it's really lightweight to keep, you know, in your pack. So, a little pack of powder. It was a great example mm -hmm. of hypothermia and frostbite, because your body system is a furnace and you treat it like a fire. If the fire goes out when you're getting hypothermic, you need to start off with the small fuel, which is the sugars, the jello, slowly add up to it and tend your fire. Lily is going to be in charge of patient care, so it's going to be her job to constantly be talking to the patient, making sure he's okay, asking him questions, making sure that he's staying coherent, that he's conscious, and that he doesn't have any aches or pains. Um, if he does, we'll have to stop and address them as they come up. So on her count, we will lift. Everybody ready? Ready. One, two, three. How you doing, Jay? All right? Yep. So as we walk, we want to try to alternate our feet as much as possible so that we don't jar him. So if Lily step in oh, with her right down, leg. Slow down. We've got to shift over to the shift right. Shift to the right. But the part that just got added was your circulatory system is like a, uh, the old radiator heat in a house the water and as soon as you're you don't have enough water in the system the heat can't regulate itself so if you drink too much water too quick now you have cold water in your system so you're hurting yourself versus yep. the whole maintaining that regular water supply that's staying warm the whole time yeah which is so, why it's important warm fluids not just internally but also around your vasculature right. to help circulate the warm the warm fluids but yeah, you are correct um, as far as the feeding that fire um, when you're when you're rewarming somebody. 
absolutely. Yeah. Wrap them up, keep them warm. Um, and just starting to move forward. More uphill. Does anybody need a break? Do we need to rotate at all? I'm guessing everybody's good. Got a big stick coming up in the center. I Life extremes, anything outside of 90 or 107, you either freeze to death or you cook. So that being said, the ways that we can lose our heat, conduction, convection, radiation, and evaporation. Now conduction is the direct transfer of heat from one object to another. So if I was sitting on this and it was a cold rock, it would be, I would be conducting heat from my body into the rock. It would just get sucked right out. Convection, if you think um, like a convection oven, it's moving air and hot, hot air over whatever it is you're cooking. So it's, it's the transfer air blowing by you and it's convecting the heat away from you. Uh, radiation, you radiate heat out from your body. So if you were to strip down like Mike and just stand here in your underwear. Like Mike. Like Mike. <laughs> then the heat just radiates off your body. Much think like the sun, you know, it radiates. We put clothes on our bodies to help keep that heat in and next to our skin. And then the last one is evaporation. That one is the one that we lose the most heat from is evaporation. Shivering produces a lot of heat. Shivering is actually can produce your heat production up to 10 times, which is why once we start getting down into the hypothermic, you start to shiver because it's, it's that involuntary muscle contraction producing heat. So the cessation or the ceasing of sweating. So if you're cold, your body stops sweating. And it does that obviously because as we mentioned before, evaporation is one of the major ways that we off, off heat or cool ourselves off. Our thermoregulation is controlled by our brain. So our brain's like, okay, I'm too hot, I'm going to start sweating. Okay, I'm getting kind of cold, I think I'm going to start shivering. It's performed through the skin, through our vasculature, through vasoconstriction and vasodilation. If you're hot, you're flushed, your, um, your vessels dilate and open right up to try and allow that heat to escape. Or if you're cold, at 98.6, like we said, we're normal. And surprisingly enough, just a small drop in degrees. At 97 degrees, you're already starting to have your brain slow down. Judgment starts to fail. So people start saying, it would be nice to just kind of lay down in the snowbank. Start to all this straight. Your movement is effective. I think I just got to try that. Agitated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Not very really subtle. Start to get a little... I don't think this is in the guide to safe scouting. Okay. <laughs> wow. What a mess. <laughs> you guys want this towel? Yeah. Oh yeah, bring the towel down, please. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Get recording. Now you're just starting to shiver. Hands are real red. Hands are real red. You yeah. blush. Some, some blue veins. I'm just starting to shiver. All right. How do you feel about fine motor controls? Um. Well. Oh, they're starting to get weak. Try it. Do the do the uh, oh, the yeah. fine motor skills test. Well, here. What, how do I do that? You're doing it right now. You're doing it right now. Okay. So, so do that. Emergent stage one, right? Yep. Cool. What other tests you got? Do the fine motor skills well, test. Take, how about you, Lily? Take, take Turn on, all right. My toes like, are pretty cold though. It, okay. Like, toes are hurting. Yeah, good. My fingers. You're good. Can you do the yeah, fine motor skills test? Yes, Any shivering? No, no shivering. Uh, a little good. on the bottom. I'm okay. just starting to shiver. All right, so everyone's feeling it in their toes? Shaking is bad. More shaking is worse. No shaking. It's so much easier to peel off a layer and throw it in the backpack than it is to stand there and freeze and wish you had that extra jacket or that extra pair of socks or, you know, I mean, just preparing in general. Like having an extra pair of socks stuffed down the front of your pants so that when your feet get cold you can switch them out and switch those in. It's those things are small but they can save your life. And it does You're as cold as ice. You're willing to say